Ever wondered how Kubernetes manages the desired state of your cluster? The answer lies in the Kube Controller Manager. So let's dive in and unravel the mystery of Kubernetes and its controller manager. Kubernetes, also known as K8S, is an open source system that automates the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. It groups containers into pods for easy management and discovery. Its popularity has soared in recent years due to its ability to manage complex containerized applications with ease. Now imagine Kubernetes as a busy city, bustling with activities. The Kube Controller Manager is like the city's mayor, ensuring that everything runs smoothly. It's the central command post, overseeing various operations within the Kubernetes cluster. The Kube Controller Manager is a daemon that runs the core control loops of a Kubernetes system. These control loops are essentially a non-terminating cycle that watches the shared state of the cluster through the API server. It makes changes to bring the current state towards the desired state. Think of it this way. We all have a daily routine to follow, right? We wake up, brush our teeth, have breakfast, and so on. Now, if any of these tasks are missed, we tend to make adjustments to get back on track. That's exactly what the Kube Controller Manager does. It constantly checks and adjusts to ensure that the current state of the Kubernetes cluster matches the desired state. To illustrate, let's imagine a simple diagram. Picture a circle representing the desired state of your Kubernetes cluster. Now envision lines from the circle towards the current state, constantly adjusting to keep the two in sync. That's the Kube Controller Manager in action. Now that we know what the Kube Controller Manager is, Let's dive deeper and see how it keeps our cluster running smoothly. So, what exactly are these controllers in the Kube Controller Manager? Well, the Kube Controller Manager is essentially a collection of controllers. These controllers are background threads that run continuously to regulate the shared state of the cluster. Each type of controller has a specific role and responsibility within the Kubernetes system. First up, is the node controller. This is like the guardian of the nodes. It takes care of nodes by managing their life cycle, noting when they go down, and making sure to replace or remove them when necessary. Think of it as a vigilant watchtower, keeping an eye on the health and status of each node in the cluster. Next, we have the replication controller. This one ensures that the correct number of pod replicas are running at any given time. If a pod goes down, the replication controller springs into action, creating a new pod to maintain the desired state. It's like having a reliable babysitter who ensures that all the kids, or in this case, the pods, are accounted for. Then there's the endpoint controller which joins services and pods. It effectively creates a bridge, allowing communication to flow between the two. It's a bit like the operator in an old-fashioned telephone exchange connecting calls between different parties. We also have the service account and token controllers, which manage default accounts and API access tokens. They're like the bouncers at a club, controlling who gets access and ensuring all the necessary credentials are in order. Finally, there's the namespace controller, which oversees namespaces. It handles the creation, updating, and deletion of namespaces acting as a sort of caretaker for these virtual walls within the Kubernetes system. With these controllers, the Kube Controller Manager ensures our cluster is always in the desired state. These controllers work tirelessly, like diligent backstage crew members in a theater production, each playing a vital role in ensuring the show goes on smoothly. They keep the Kubernetes cluster humming along, maintaining its balance and robustness, no matter what the workload might be. And that's why Understanding these controllers is so crucial when working with Kubernetes. So, let's dive deeper into the real-life applications in our next section. How about we see the Kube Controller Manager in action? Picture this. You're an IT professional managing a Kubernetes cluster in a bustling tech company. It's a typical day at work and all is running smoothly. Suddenly, one of your nodes goes down. This is where our superhero, the Kube Controller Manager, comes into play. The Kube Controller Manager is like the conductor of an orchestra, ensuring all parts work in harmony. When a node goes down, 
the node controller within the Coop Controller Manager springs into action. It notices the node's status has changed to not ready and starts a countdown. If the node doesn't recover within a specified period, typically five minutes, the node controller leaps into action. It begins by evicting all the pods from the failed node. But don't worry, these pods won't be lost in the ether. The replication controller, another component of the Kube controller manager, is always keeping a watchful eye on the number of pods. It ensures that the desired number of pod replicas are always running. So when it sees the number of running pods drop, it immediately starts creating new pods to replace those evicted from the failed node. These new pods aren't just created randomly, though. The scheduler, yet another component of the Cube Controller Manager, takes over from here. It assesses the remaining node's capacity and schedules the new pods on them. The scheduler ensures that the workloads are evenly distributed and that no node is overburdened. But what happens to the failed node? Well, the Cube Controller Manager doesn't just abandon it. The node controller keeps checking on it, and if it recovers, the node is welcomed back into the cluster, ready to host pods once again. Now, let's add a twist to our story. What if the node that failed was running a service? A service in Kubernetes is a way to expose an application running on a set of pods as a network service. When a node running a service fails, the endpoints controller, another part of the Kube controller manager, comes to the rescue. It updates the list of endpoints, which are IP addresses and ports where the service can be accessed to exclude the failed node and include the new pods running the service. This way, even though a node has failed, the service remains available. Users might not even notice that anything has gone wrong, thanks to the Kube Controller Manager's seamless orchestration. As you can see, the Kube Controller Manager plays a crucial role in ensuring our Kubernetes cluster is always up and running. It's the silent guardian, the watchful protector of our Kubernetes cluster, tirelessly working behind the scenes to keep our applications running smoothly. Why is the Kube Controller Manager so important in Kubernetes? Well, let's dive into that. The Kube Controller Manager, often shortened to KCM, is the unsung hero of Kubernetes. It's the brain behind the operations, the maestro conducting the orchestra that is your Kubernetes cluster. Imagine your cluster as a bustling city. The Kube Controller Manager would be the city mayor, ensuring that everything runs smoothly and efficiently. It's responsible for maintaining the desired state of the cluster. From managing the nodes, to regulating network traffic, to handling storage, the KCM has a role in it all. Now you might think, can't we just manually manage these tasks? Technically, yes. But would you want to? Probably not. That's like choosing to walk 100 miles when you have a high-speed train at your disposal. The KCM automates these tasks, saving you precious time and effort. Moreover, the KCM is not just about automation, it's about smart automation. It constantly monitors the state of your cluster, comparing it to your desired state. If something goes awry, it doesn't just alert you, it takes corrective action. It's like having a personal assistant who not only tells you when your tie is crooked, but also straightens it for you. The KCM also plays a crucial role in facilitating scalability, one of the key advantages of Kubernetes. It manages the replication of pods, ensuring that your applications can handle increased traffic and demand. In a world where online demand can spike unpredictably, this is a vital feature. Lastly, the KCEM ensures the resilience of your cluster. In the unfortunate event of a node failure, it redistributes the workloads to other nodes, ensuring minimal disruption to your services. So, in a nutshell, the Cube Controller Manager is the silent guardian of your Kubernetes cluster. It automates tasks, ensures scalability, and maintains resilience, making your life significantly easier. Without the Cube Controller Manager, managing a Kubernetes cluster would be a daunting task. Indeed, the KCM is not just important, it's indispensable. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned today. We started our journey by diving into the core concepts of Kubernetes and the pivotal role of the Kuba Controller Manager. The Kuba Controller Manager, as we discovered, 
is the heart of Kubernetes that ensures the cluster's desired state is maintained. We further delved into the different controllers that reside within the Kube Controller Manager, each with a unique responsibility from managing nodes to handling endpoints. These controllers, as we noted, work tirelessly in the background to ensure smooth sailing in your Kubernetes journey. We then moved on to a real-life example, showcasing the Kube Controller Manager in action, giving us a taste of its power and versatility. Finally, we underscored the importance of Kube Controller Manager, asserting its significance in maintaining the health and efficiency of your Kubernetes cluster. With the Kube Controller Manager, Kubernetes ensures your cluster is always in the desired state. Remember, a well-managed cluster is a happy cluster. Until next time, happy coding.